Hi guys, this is Doug Schrift from Elder Gym. I'm a physical therapist and senior fitness coach, and I help seniors become strong and stable, even if they've never exercised before. Today, I'm so excited to have Greg Irwin. He's a hand fitness expert, and we're going to chat and find out all about hand fitness from the expert, Greg Irwin. Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks, Doug. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you in the Elder Gym Academy. Thanks very much. Well, let's start by introducing yourself and let me know your background and, and how you got involved with uh, the fingers and the hands. <laughs> well, um, I have a degree in music education from Miami University of Ohio. Yay! And, and uh, while I was studying there, all music education majors had to pass a piano exam. That's when uh, I, I, my main instrument is percussion, uh, but we had to pass a piano exam. So I just started doing these simple little movements one summer when I had a boring summer job, try to pre prepare my hands for the class. So it started in the 70s, in 1979, uh, and it helped me pass the piano exam. And it just kept developing as if first it was kind of tricks I would show my friends at parties and it developed into this whole body of knowledge, which I call finger fitness. I came out with my first book and video in 1988. So I've been exercising my hands and trying to educate the world about this uh, for at least 36 years since my first book came out. Wow. That's well, wow, since from the seventies, pretty much then, huh? It, it, started in the 70s it developed in about the mid 80s i i kind of felt like there aren't any books on how to exercise your hands. and we use our hands obviously for so many things but we don't think about how important it is to condition your hands to develop your strength limberness and coordination so the idea developed over several years and i researched this and it seemed to be there was no programs on how to exercise your hands. I'm just kind of was amazed. And my wife being an anthropologist and being a music major, we kind of brought this idea together and that's how finger fitness, uh, the program was launched and started. It seems like musicians would be really important because pretty much anything, any musician I know it's all hands, right? And well, a little mouth too. You know, those bugle guys and the harmonicas and trombone, not so much, but all musicians do have to, to, to play the piano. Uh, and, and the concept is very simple. When you think about the importance for you to have strength and limberness and coordination and dexterity and strength, it sounds like I'm talking about an athlete. You know, football, basketball, strength, core strength, limberness. Well, I'm talking about an athlete, but I'm talking about a small muscle athlete. And that was kind of where I kind of thought, wait a minute. A musician is a muscle, is an athlete in a sense that this is very athletic. What I'm doing with my fingers, strength, limberness, coordination, that is at athletic so i think of a person that really uses their hands a lot like a musician or typing a magician um fine motor skills you're you're in a sense a small muscle athlete and once you think of yourself as an athlete then the whole concept of conditioning your body to maximize your ability makes a lot of sense and that's where the hands are small muscle athlete yeah, that's pretty amazing because your hands, you know, as a physical therapist, you have muscles that we call intrinsics, which which are all in your hand and they originate in your hand and end in your hand. And then we have your extrinsic, the gripping ones are outside your hands, but all the little ones, you know, right. especially, especially the thumb right, uh, are inside right? because we have our, our uh, thenar eminence. See if I can remember all this. Right, a thenar eminence there, and then a hypothenar there, and you have three muscles here and three muscles there, and they kind of right uh, really control that. Um, and then we have all our lumbricals and our interosseous muscles, and so there's a lot of muscles right in the hand itself. Exactly, the inner the intrinsic muscles and 
why don't we exercise the hand? I've always just been amazed that we don't. And uh, there are a lot of studies showing that grip strength is a is an indicator um, of of your lifespan. Really, the stronger your hand strength, the longer you live. That's what I've heard. Um, there's a little bit of fake. Finger exercises involve the repetitive movements that help strengthen your muscles and tendons and ligaments in your hands and fingers. This can lead to improved grip strength, finger endurance, making everyday activities easier to perform. And that makes so much sense. The stronger your hands are, it makes everything easier to perform. And I think once you hit 60, 65 years old, you have a natural decline in hand strength. And if you don't do anything, that's what's going to happen. It'll keep declining. And doing some simple strengthening exercises on a daily basis, I think, can help you maintain or even enhance the natural ability of your hands. Yeah, and, and in the, uh, the rehab world, occupational therapy, physical therapy, we have the term um, ADLs, or activities of daily living. And most of them involve cooking, cleaning, um, uh, you know, using the restroom, showering, feeding yourself. It's all hands. So right. Uh, right. Uh, quite important as you get older to maintain your independence, especially maintaining your independence and not getting injured is one of your big goals is, is getting it to becoming a senior is don't get injured and, and keep your independence. Right. The hands are so much an important part of that. I always, there's always three things I think of when, when it comes to hand fitness. Most people, when I talk to them and tell them I have a company called handhealth.com, they will say, oh, like rehabilitation? That's what most people think about when I talk about hand fitness. And that is correct. It is used in rehabilitation from um it can aid in recovering from various hand injuries such as fractures sprains or surgery um, but number two which which is what i was more, more about and what i was talking about a small muscle athlete is maximize the ability of your hands by conditioning just like an athlete lifting weights and push-ups has nothing to do with playing football Yet it increases your ability to play football by increasing, you know, maximizing your strength. So, exercising your hands, of course, it's rehabilitation, but maximizing your ability. And the last one is once you're in pretty good shape, you can prevent problems. You know, if you're not limber or have enough strength and you're stressing more to do certain things, you will be more injury prone. So, exercising your hands. Of course, it's good for rehabilitation. You probably have been involved with that. If you're a senior, you might have used a putty, various things to overcome hand injuries, maximize your ability, and maintain and prevent problems. Yeah, very, especially dexterity, uh, which involves the small muscles. Now, people might be thinking, what are you doing with those red and blue gloves on? I know we jumped into the pretty quick, Doug, and maybe we... We're going too fast, but back in 1988, and I have it, people was like, well, is this hands really that good or not? Well, let's see here. Back in 1988, when I came out with my first book and video, I wanted something to go, whoa. And so I, I created this video using these red and blue gloves on my hands so that you could see the different movements. And that's how I got on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Now, luckily, people listening to this what or watching your your podcast here probably remember Johnny Carson because if you're seniors, I talk to kids nowadays and they say Johnny who? But when I came out with my first video, it was picked up by a local Channel 12 News in Cincinnati, and the Tonight Show got it. And I've traveled all around the world in a dozen countries. I was on Johnny Carson and Jay Leno and Chevy Chase and lots of TV shows. So. It's kind of been my life's mission of trying to educate and entertain people around the world of the importance of hand strength and ability. And to finish up with that for coming into where we are with seniors, I've been volunteering at several senior homes um, in Hamilton, Ohio, for about the last eight years. 
and I teach a class called Hand Fitness for Life class. And it's a lot of fun. And I really would encourage people across the world to do this in your own senior centers or community centers. And I want to talk to you a little bit about this as we go. Um, maybe, Doug, should I show a couple little exercises for this now, or you're leading the way? What, what's next? Uh, uh, here, let me show. I have that little uh, little uh, couple pictures. I just wanted to stress the importance of sure. how, how important the hands are. And um, uh, I just have a little image here. So all our hands are, all our motor functions are controlled by our motor cortex, which is in our brain. And uh, if you look, there's something called a cortical homunculus. Homunculus is, I think, Greek for small person. But it gives you a, a ratio or a representation of how much of the brain is devoted to what part of your body. And you can see the biggest parts are like your lips and your hands for some reason, uh, you know, very little on your back and everywhere else. And if you, if you made a 3d model of the representation of your, uh, sensory and motor control, you would look like this. You would have giant hands. So the, the, the brain, it, it has a lot of space for the hands. So you can see the relative importance, well, of your lips and of your hands, uh, you know, with that 3D model there. Um, I just wanted to show that just to, it, just how important your hands are, you know, really. So yeah, do you have something that seniors could do, uh, like a little, uh, uh, Let me uh, a little exercise program? Finger fitness, I, I've kind of isolated the natural movements or the fundamental movements down to about seven or eight different. Let me start off with three that I like to always use in class. First, fold your fingers down like this. Well, here, let me, uh, let me do this with you here. I'm going to uh, switch my camera view here. Here we go. Let's see if I can do these with you here. All right, we're gonna put Doug on the spot here. Just folding down and back and forth. Okay, fold, fold, folding and folding. Okay, put your hands back in like I'm in a, a matching and symmetrical resting position. Now I want you to tap your fingers. Just pull back. This really works your extensors. And the last one is just push on one side and then push on the other side like that. Folding, tapping, and pushing back and forth. So if I do those three again, fold, tap, push, here we go. Folding, folding. I'm just gonna do a couple folds for you. Now I'm gonna do a couple taps, tap. And then push back and forth like that. And I'm going to do it just one beat each. So fold, tap, push. Folding, tap, tap, push, push. Fold, fold, tap, tap, push, push. Now, when you first start doing these three movements, it's, it's, you're developing your muscle memory. You, you're you're making these movements become automatic right now you have to maybe think about each move but just simply going fold fold tap tap push push this really helps your mainly i would say this is your limberness a little bit of your strength a little coordination you can also also bring your thumb into it tap Tap, push, push. Now let's break those three movements down. Folding. Let me just let's just fold your fingers. I'm gonna step out of the way. Maybe you can see this a little bit better. Fold your fingers back over, back and forth. Now I want you to fold just your first finger like this. Okay. 
Okay, see how that works. Fall, fall, nice and slow all the way down. Then once you kind of get the hang of that, then just fold your second finger. This is where you really start developing the coordination. Go all the way down. Now, if you do have any problems, like any other exercise routine, you wanna, you don't want to stress your strain, especially if you have a, have a problem. Uh, you want to stop. So now fold, fold, stop. Now this this will this would be the first level when you're starting to really get it down. You can fold each one all the way down. Fold, fold, stop. <laughs> fold, fold, stop. Now later, Doug, you're doing pretty good there. I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> now, now once I get that down, then I can, then I can make it automatic. Now this. I'm kind of showing off, but I'm showing you what the goal eventually should be. This is oh, one, wow. two, three, four. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, a little too fast for me. Um, now, but well, I want to show everybody so I can give you a little eye candy to keep you entertained. But this yeah. is so, so now let's tap your fingers one at a time. So I just want you to go tap, just tap your first finger. And again, don't stress or strain, just whatever, whatever is easy. Tap your middle finger and try to only move that finger you're working on. Then your ring finger, the ring finger is That's tough. a lot more difficult. Go as far as you can. And then the little finger. So now I'm going to go tap, tap all the way down each one. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Tap, tap. So you're just working on the taps. Now let's put the put it together with folding and tapping. Fold, fold, tap, tap. We go fold, fold, tap, tap. Next finger, fold, tap, tap, fold. I know I'm going really fast. I wouldn't expect you to <laughs> stay up with me. I, I don't mean to make I don't want to make anybody look bad here. Um, now, back to the last one, pushing back and forth. Remember, I want you to just push down one finger at a time. Now, yeah. if you're not going to do anything else I suggest, you better do this one. This is so easy to do. And this is really then just go down your middle finger. You, I would say strength and flexibility, limberness. And this is the one that really can help your limberness. It's a great activity for almost any time, any place, sitting in a chair, sitting in bed, the doctor's office. Hopefully you're not at the doctor's office too much. But if you are, just remember that one. Now, remember, let's go back to the whole movements. Fold, tap, push, and kind of wrap this up. Folding, remember, folding a couple nice. times. Now, tapping a couple times, tapping a few times. And then the last one, pushing back and forth. All right, here's the big here's the big one. We'll put it all together. Folding, tapping, pushing, one finger at a time. Real slow. Fold, fold, tap, 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 then push, push. Again, fold, tap, push. Same finger. Fold, fold, then tap, 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 and then push, push. Now we're gonna go down to the middle finger. Boy. Fold, then tapping, tap, tap, and then push back and forth. We'll do that one again for Doug. <laughs> fold, I'm kidding, fold, tap, 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 and then push, push. Actually, Doug's doing amazing. Yeah. Um, ring, ring finger, fold, fold, tap, tap, push, Push. Let's just end with the little finger then. Oh fold, fold, tap, tap, push, push. All right, let's let's everybody give it up. Yeah. Um, now, I know in a way that's a lot to throw at you, but I wanted to break down these three movements and show you. It's just it's that simple. It's definitely something to do. It's not that hard. It's not that hard at all. Um, 
What do you think, Doug, of those three moves? Well, let me critique everything here. Are you ready? <laughs> so, um, yeah, when I think about your movements and I think about the uh, anatomy of the hand, as I'm a therapist, uh, especially when you're extending uh, your, your index finger and your pinky, they, they have two extensor tendons, right? But your middle ones only have one. So these, and they're kind of, there's a little web here. So right. the middle, middle two ones are always harder. Like, uh, you know, I don't exercise, but so it, it's a little easier on your first finger because that has its, its own uh, extensor tendon and a, the, the pinky has its own. So, uh, you know, working that is very good because you learn to, to separate that. And, you, you know, I, I'm amazed at how you can, especially these two, you can, uh, you have those separated in your brain. You, cause your, your, your hand and your brain is, is twice the size of a normal person. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like those two is, you know, it's really hard. Uh, so you're getting flexion in there with this, you're getting, uh, what's the other one? Oh, uh, tapping, tapping and then pushing and pushing. Yeah. So you're getting, uh, some flexion, some extension, with the tapping so you got those two taken care of and then you've got the uh, you've got the pushing so you're you're actually you know you're actually doing a stretch right, to, your, right. to your to your metacarpals right so you're doing a metacarpal stretch there which is pretty yep. good too yep uh, you know, it's, since we're talking about this i didn't really bring this one up is we're talking about the pushing back and forth uh the next level it's kind of a fun one too is uh doing this oh, like a little it's fancy but all you're doing is i'm leading with one finger at a time like i'm going to push with my little finger and then push back like this so just you know yeah, that's going to take a while for me to get <laughs> again i've been doing this for 45 years i can twist my hands how's that <laughs> so, so it's kind of like pushing one side and then pushing back and then you can also lead with your your uh here, so let me just show off a little though. I can I do these things where you can like bring them together and like flare. Oh yeah. But again, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I was on Guinness World Book of Records for having the best hands in the world. Oh my goodness! Wow. Kind of my reputation here a little bit. Yeah. It's, and uh, well, let me, let me throw you a question at you since you're you're you know we're seniors and you're. I think you're entering the senior world soon. Um, um, how how is your how is how have you changed? It, like, you know, you're like super hand person, but uh, how would your hands be if you didn't do all this? Or I guess that's a good question. Um, I I don't know, but I can say here's how they are since I do them. I do a lot of live casts. <laughs> Uh, for kids. And I tell these kids, why are my hands better than anybody else here? Because I exercise them every day and I really work on it. And um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's as my hands get older, though, I am finding some senior, some senior, some senior, I'm not sure what it would be. You know, I feel like this middle, this little finger is kind of curling in on me a little bit. I mean, it's kind of like I, in a way, I have some of the best hands in the world, but my hands, I'm almost 65 years old, so I know we're, we're talking to seniors out of here. <laughs> I get the McDonald's discount, but I'm almost 65. I'm coming up on it right about July 3rd. Um, if you want to send me a birthday, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but I will say I have, and I usually don't say this a lot. Uh, I think I'll, I'll say this in here, though. I have had a couple issues in the last seven or eight years there was one time i i was diagnosed with like a thumb tendonitis um and i think the problem was i was overdoing it too much i had a i had a cell phone that had a double screen on it and i was editing a movie too much for about three or four months because of a faulty screen i had to double down and um <clears throat> i was diagnosed with it was like i think they called it thumb 
And the queer veins. And I had a cortisone shot. And um, through a lot of alternative therapy, I was able to, able to fully overcome this without surgery. Uh, I acupuncture. I, I saw I had acupuncture done <clears throat> several times. I'm just talking about what worked for me. I'm not trying to give medical advice, but I'm telling you as a testimonial. I also believe a lot in um, taking fish oil, turmeric, B12, apple cider vinegar um, helped a lot because I had a calcium deposit and I put a heating pad on it at night, took apple cider vinegar and it all, I, I got over it. So that I was pretty happy about. And I, I don't talk about this a lot, but I did have a mild case of trigger finger a few years ago and it sprung up on me one morning, like, Whoa, uh, got a cortisone shot. You know, it didn't seem like it helped. I continued to do a lot of my, um, exercises and as you can see i pretty much have overcome this so I, I feel pretty pretty blessed because i probably pushed my hands probably more than almost anybody else ever has and uh like i'm almost 65 and my hands as you can see i think they're working better in certain sense they're more coordinated than ever and i'm just trying to pass this gift in a sense on to others. If you start working with it now, especially if you've got kids, your grandkids, it's really simple. The better your hands work, the better you can operate. Take care of your hands and they will take care of you. Sorry, Doug, I'm getting, I'm talking to the seniors out here. <laughs> All right, anyway, I didn't mean to get off track here. Well, yeah, I wanted to mention, um, you know, growing older and you, and you mentioned your, some of the physical uh, challenges you've had with your hands. Uh, I think it was like two months ago, and it's interesting, you, you know, we're doing this this uh, podcast here, but and, and I actually took a picture of it, but I was watching a TV show about Hawaii, and in Hawaii, they do a lot of surfing, and there's this hand gesture, I'm sure you're very familiar with it, and it's called uh, the shaka, and it's like a... Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of it here. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. So it's called, so it's a Hawaiian thing. And, and I was just watching TV and I said, I can't do that. <laughs> and you I can't? said, it looks so simple. How can I not do that? <laughs> so it's basically like, like I couldn't extend my pinky and my thumb at the same time. And I'm like, boy, am I stiff. Like that was my moment going, wow, I need to start doing something. <laughs> right. I, so the, it's like a. And this kind of the hang, I thought this used to be like the hang loose sign too. Yeah. It's like a Hawaiian type of thing where they're surfing, you know, and they go, hey, what's up? You know. Or, All right. <laughs> I've never been to Hawaii. I'd love to go there, but I haven't been there yet. Yeah. So it's like, you know, as seniors, we have these moments, you know, you might be uh, getting a fork and, and you know, punching a turkey and going, boy, that my hand grip or something is not as good anymore. So yes. I, I think we all have a moment as we get older where we say, wow, boy, I can't open that jar anymore or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And uh, it's, it's, you know, hand fitness is so overlooked, but it's so easy now that you understand it. Hey, get on board. Let's get started. It's never too late to get started. Well, uh, yeah, this cues us up to show us some of the, um, uh, your the products that you have to help seniors uh, strengthen. You have books, you have DVDs, you have uh, uh, balls. Uh, uh, I have a few of them here, but let me let me just run you through quickly through my the line I've developed over since 1988. I came out with my first book and video, um, Finger Fitness: The Art of Finger Control, and this pretty much kind of lays out how. how what finger fitness is, how to get started, who should use it. Primarily, I just want to flip through this so you can just see it. It's pretty much a picture book, and it lays out all of the natural movements for your hands, to isolating natural movements. Uh, and this is a great resource guide to get started. All these are available for downloads. Um, back to children. I know we're talking to seniors today, but seniors, anybody watch, babysitting their grandkids maybe? This is a great 
video for children. It has 10 different fun children's songs and you follow along. Stuff like I think you get it. Uh, some really cool music and it's great for seniors, parents to work with their their kids, five to twelve year olds. So I've got the video the beginner video. If you want to just get started, this is the complete hand video for beginners to advanced. Now, for those who really are serious, maybe you got some kids who are magicians, um, musicians, the advanced finger fitness guide. So, and you can buy these all as downloads and or as bundles also. So, lots of uh, five videos. I've, I've created the video in the last four decades. Now, and, and for those of you who are looking for that finger fitness in Mandarin, my book has been published. <laughs> in mandarin oh my goodness and if i can say so it's a fun little tidbit a guy contacted me from um myanmar and he asked he says he's a doctor and he asked if he could translate the book in the burmese somehow i thought it was a scam but it wasn't they actually copied it in the burmese and my book has been distributed to a lot of doctors in myanmar so i'm just happy to keep finger fitness moving around the world now, oh. besides my exercises, um, I start. This is going back to the mid '80s. I was so just kind of um, fascinated and um, intrigued by exercising your hands. Now, I'm going to take my gloves off if you guys don't mind for just a minute. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen. They were popular back in the '90s. You might have seen these. These are called, we call them Chinese metal, Chinese therapy balls. And they come in um, four different sizes. And they have my special, there you go. You can you see that? There's four sizes right there. Um, and what you do is you simply rotate them in your hands. So I'm gonna pick up some that kind of fit, fit my hands pretty well. These are yeah. your ones. I got now, mine here. I'm going to follow you here. All right. <laughs> I'm getting worried because he almost showed me up on the. <laughs> this I can't do. All right. Now, Doug, you want to rotate it around from the thumb side. I think you're doing that. Yeah, there you go. One way is kind of easy. Yeah, that's the easy way. Um, now, what you're doing, Doug, talk, Doug, you're more of a, you understand the better than I, but you're really putting the strength of your hand muscles in the ocean with working with these. Okay. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of jump through this a little quicker now. So this is one way. I'm going to go the other direction. That's a little more difficult at first. And then the second level is where you don't touch. You separate them so they don't like that. Yeah, it's hard to go that way. And then when you get really good, you can roll them around the other way. Oh, my goodness. You can really <laughs> I can hardly get around. Her. Now, wow. a lot of times I do, and people say, oh, I could never do that. And they put them down. So I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to scare anybody. What I really recommend, out of I mean, finger fitness exercises are not that hard. You really should do like some folding, tapping, pushing, really simple stuff. But for those super lazy people, and I don't think Doug has any of those. Doug is such a great motivator teacher. But for those people who are just like, eh, just get a ball, get a marble ball, get a golf ball and do this. It's so simple, but this is how I kind of like to start massaging the palm of your hand, you know, engaging in finger exercises helps pr promote blood flow, which can deliver oxygen and nutrients to the, to the tissues. You can feel a feel healing and can... So just hitting very beneficial. Now, it's really simple. Just rolling a ball. Um, it, it, 
I really suggest trying to do just a really easy little finger exercise workout, a um, couple minutes a day. It's a great way to start your day and end your day. And uh, so that's just, I always, when I teach my hand fitness for life class, I like to start off with this marble or solid ones. Great for thermal therapy. Put them in a heating pad. Like, wow, these feel really good. And they do feel good. Or put them in the freezer as an ice down. If you want your mind or your brain to say, wait a minute, get one really hot and we get one really cold and they cancel each other. It's one of the weirdest things, Doug. I'm not kidding you. You can't hold one for a few seconds. It's too hot or it's too cold. You put hot and cold together, they cancel each other and then you can roll them around. But, uh, that would be weird. I never thought about that. It, yeah, it's it's too odd for the for the mind. Yeah. But the, the stone ones, if you already got them, and it's so easy, you don't have to know anything other than put them on, put them in my hand, just rotate them around. Now, I've done this on a lot of television shows all around the world. Let me see. Let me just can I, can I show off for you just a little bit because that's that's my job. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so before I was doing it where they don't touch this way, the other way. Now, whatever you do with one hand, you want to try to be able to do with the other hand. This is kind of cool. Just rotating, rolling them around like this in one hand. And now, this is, you just want to be a spectator. I don't expect too many people to do this. This took me a few years just to be able to, to do this. Um, okay, I better not drop it if I'm looking so good so far. Here we go. It really becomes a flow art unto itself. And again, I don't expect really anybody to be able to take it to this level. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll do my moves at the same time. Let's see here. How about one more? Let's I usually don't do this on, I don't think I've ever done this on anybody else's podcast, but this podcast <laughs> for Doug and Elder Jim, I thought I would do this for you. Check this out. This Some people call this contact juggling because it's basically juggling sideways. Now, how many do you see here? There you go. And I created in 1997. I went to China and created a video, an instructional video, all about these, how they're made. Um, there I am, everybody. It's like, what is that, 25 years ago? And it shows you how they're made, the masters of China, a certified hand therapist. So uh, I'm really proud of this video. I created this in 1997 uh, near Beijing. And uh, it's, it's available as a download also. So that's uh so important and it's one of my favorite exercise tools just get some stone spheres or some metal ones and you're ready to roll ready to roll yeah i've seen those videos of those uh jugglers over in china it is just astounding yep yep it's mesmerizing uh, if i can show you a couple other tools that i really <clears throat> recommend to people um something more for dexterity this is a fidget. It's not a fidget spinner. They were popular. But the fidget spinners really didn't do much to exercise, move your hands. This fidget actually rotates in and out just like that. I think the purple, you can see a little bit better. See this? It's six links that are linked together. And you just exercise your fingertips. It's good for your thumb. So, again, what are you doing for strength? What do you, what are you what are you doing for strength? What are you doing for limberness? What are you doing for dexterity? That's where these tools all come together. I've talked to professional football teams gone through some of these products they say just give me one good product it's like if i gave you just one good product i would 
I wouldn't be giving you the best advice. If you go to the gym, like Nautilus, there's 16 different machines. There's your legs, your arms, your back, your your chest, your everything. It's just not one. And the same with your hand. You need something for your strength, something for your limberness. Coordination, there's a lot of tools out there. But what I really recommend, Chinese therapy balls and the Fiddlink as far as a fidget goes. Um, there's another one I really like a lot. This is called, I'm not sure if you've seen this before, Doug. This is called a, uh, a flex grip. And this is kind of, so you can squeeze it. This is great for your strength, for your flexors and then your extensors try to work both sides of the muscles if you can this is one i really like it's it's kind of a gel feel uh it's called a flex grip and all these products are are available at handhealth.com all right yeah we have about four minutes left so yeah let's see if we can um wrap up here and uh so the key takeaways are you need to exercise every day, right? right. Yes. Something. Try to do this as a daily workout, a little in the morning, maybe a little at night. Um, we didn't really talk about this as I'm talking to you. I want you to think about this simple massage. Usually we, I start with this and just massaging at the base of your hand all the way out real slow to your little finger. I'm kind of going fast, but you want to go real slow. Then you start over and just go real slow out to your ring finger. And then you just keep going through all your fingers and then on the other side. Um, I did want to just stress, I want to kind of wrap up with two of these massages. This is the, the thumb massage. The last one is the hamburger massage, I call it. Just take one hand and you grab it like this and you just squeeze up and then over, kind of like you're making a hamburger, squeezing up. And if you can flex over, so you're kind of going this way, squeeze up. So these are these two are just simple warm-up exercises, just massaging back and forth and the thumb massage. Every day, try to do those along with folding, tapping, pushing. Get a little bit of a routine. Have some fun with it. Absolutely. Do it to your own. Do it to Frank Sinatra or whatever. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, and the nice thing about hand exercises is you can do them anywhere at any time, really. Exactly, exactly. You know, when people say, I don't have time to do that. It's like, you get out of here. You got time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. So um, so in the future, uh, you're working on some other projects. Um, you're talking about some proprioceptive projects you're doing. Um, you know, I've been doing this. It's it's tactile tracing and it's and it's doing these different circles of your fingerprints like a spiral or i'm going to start big and get down to a smaller one and i can go on the other side i can do two at a time there's there's ways i can do it where i'm this is kind of hard to explain this a whole lot but the idea of tracing your fingerprints you have 3,000 touch receptors under each fingerprint this is something i'll be working on it'll be released in the next few months it's uh just a way you can relax help you fall asleep it's uh tactile print tracing it's going to be called finger fitness touch something very new well i almost need some talcum powder i'm kind of sticky <laughs> yeah you put a little sand in there too you know it's it's kind of like wow you can just you can really feel the ridges on your fingerprints. So that's, that's a whole new thing I'm, I've been working on too. It's a, it's, it's a little bit different from physical exercise, but it's uh, it kind of brings together the mental and the physical. Wow. So Greg, where can um, people find you and how do they stay updated and connect with you uh, online? Well, my website is handhealth.com and I, uh, I do have a Facebook page. It's called Hand and Finger Fitness. Uh, I do a TikTok thing of, of what do they call those? The streams. Uh, it's at Finger Fitness. Um, and I think Instagram, I've got a, a, a channel called Hand Health. A little bit scattered here and there, but uh, I'm out there. If you 
if you want to see me, uh, Greg Irwin, Johnny Carson, you can Google that. You'll probably say, oh, that's the guy when he had long hair. But <laughs> Younger back then. Got my hair. Um, <laughs> all right. Sorry. Well, um, Greg, I really appreciate it. I want to uh, just uh, thank you very much for coming on our show today. And if you have any last final tips for our seniors out there as we uh, conclude here. Well, um, now that you understand, hopefully, the importance of exercising your hands and try to embrace this, things going yourself, please pass this on. Because this isn't for this isn't free. If you give somebody a gift and it's a good gift, they should keep passing it on, like Doug's been doing. So we, I would hope you could spread this to others. And let me finish with kind of an exercise. It's kind of a fun little kind of a trick in a way. Put your thumbs up like this. And then I want you to put your thumbs in each finger like that. All right. Very good, Doug. And two fingers come out. Uh -oh. oh, that's going to be hard. Now, now touch your, <laughs> touch your fingertips together and then bring your hands together like this. Oh my goodness. Wow. You, and then say elder Jim rocks. Oh, wow. That's like a face. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a fun thing. Hey, buddy. And talk to your kids like that, boy. That, well, it, you know, if it's boring, you, people won't even be watching us anymore. So it's yeah. see, I can blink my eyes. I used to tell the kids when I was a substitute teacher, if you see a pretty girl, you just wink at her. But you know, <laughs> a lot of, you know, there's a lot going on. Your finger, little finger, six-year-old kids, you'll be the big hit at the next kid's party this <laughs> you are hand or armed haha -ha. so don't forget that one and shadow puppets right probably work really well <laughs> yeah so you know i consider myself to be an entertainer i like to educate i like to entertain and i really appreciate doug giving me this opportunity to share this idea some of these these methods some of these exercises with your community and i hope you guys can get something from it and keep passing it along all right hey thanks a lot greg and we'll sign off here thanks doug and to uh good luck to all the elder gym uh, followers and participants best of luck to everybody thank you all right